Coming up next on this edition of the RCWR Show Extra. After 33 years, David Letterman says goodbye. Actor Bill Murray and director of Lost in Translation, Sofia Coppola, reunite for a special Murray Christmas special. We'll give you the details on that one. Taking a look back at Samoa Joe's WWE debut. Vince Russo pisses off the wrestling community once again. We'll give you the details about that one. And Total Divas is on the move to a new day. Many of you all may rejoice in that one. TNA Wrestling, canceled? Not canceled. We'll explain. Coming up on this special edition of the RCWR Show Extra. And it starts right now. to meet you nice to know me it's the one and only the black avenger aka the black Azrael lee sanders thank you all so much for checking out this edition of the rcwr show extra for may 22nd 2015 we're back with another installment before we jump right into it i want to take this time out to thank the many of you out there for checking out our inaugural edition we asked you guys for feedback Majority of you all, major presence felt by either commenting or hitting us up throughout social media saying you want more extra. So we're going to give it to you. We're going to try to do our best to give it to you every single Friday night. Unless something weird happens, then worst case scenario, you'll get it Saturday. But for the most part, we're going to do our best to make sure you get it every single Friday night. Appreciate the love and support, and as always, especially for those of you that might be new to checking us out for the first time, make sure you do hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on all the great content we do for you here on a regular basis. At this point, if you haven't subscribed, it's a little red button down below the video here. All right, let's jump right into it. So, after 33 years of being involved in late night talk... David Letterman has stepped down from The Late Show. Talk about a really classy way that he went out. I love the way that he went out as he had a guest of celebrities that helped him commemorate the final episode. We had saw the likes of Jerry Seinfeld, Peyton Manning, Chris Rock, Alec Baldwin, Bill Murray, Steve Martin, just to name a few. I don't want to give it all away for those of you that maybe recorded it on your DVR and you haven't gotten around to checking it out yet. Hopefully you did record it because if you did not record it, my friend, you are missing out on a piece of American history Never before, probably never again, will we see a talent quite like David Letterman. You know, I couldn't help but kick myself in the butt after I got done watching the finale. And good strong finish to that episode as well as he had the Foo Fighters play him out. They sung their favorite uh, song of his, which is definitely a favorite of mine ever long. Shout out if you guys love the acoustic version with just Dave Grohl. I know that recently has surfaced on a Greatest Hits Foo Fighter compilation album a couple of years back. But I couldn't help but say after the finale was over just how much I wished I would have watched more David Letterman. But at one point, many points as I would check up on him during the years, it seemed like he was going through the same old type of jokes it kind of came off as if he was rehashing the same jokes on like a weekly basis i remember there was a period a couple of years back where he would go uh got any gum and it would go like that for like every single night for like two weeks or whatever and i needed a break after that but uh, you, you know at this point it, it, i really wouldn't care right now you know uh, they, they don't make late night talk TV like they used to. And David Letterman was a one of a kind type of cat. Definitely going to be missed. David, as I said on Twitter, I'm sure many of uh, our listeners and fans of uh, Letterman will definitely agree with me on this one. You sorely will be missed. Thank you for the laughs. 
Thank you for the cries as a result of those good laughs. Thanks for all the memories and hope you enjoy retirement. Make it a good one. Uh, I'm sure at this point, he probably wants to just chill for a little while, stay out of the limelight. Now, for those of you that's wondering what's going on with the late show, there is going to be a successor to the throne. His name is Stephen Colbert from the Colbert Report. He will be taking over the late night responsibilities for the late show coming up in September, probably a little bit after the Labor Day holiday. So, don't worry, we'll definitely have a full review on how he does that first week as time progresses. Moving along, we were talking about how Bill Murray had made a special cameo appearance along with other celebrities on that final edition of The Late Show. Well, it looks like Bill Murray is going to be reuniting with Loss in Translation director Sofia Coppola and they're doing a very special project. This is a original Netflix special that will be premiering later this year in December, and it's called A Very Murray Christmas. Now, this special revolves around Bill Murray, who's probably going to be playing a louder version of himself as it's being dubbed. He's playing himself, but it's probably going to be a louder, obnoxious version of himself. He's trying to put together a special, but it looks as though that special may not be able to air because there is supposed to be a New York City snowstorm coming. All-Star cast is in this. Uh, we have Miley Cyrus, Chris Rock, Alec Baldwin. It's like a who's who's list of this. Again, it's going to be a Netflix original special that will be premiering later this year in December. But, you know, it has not stopped the cast and crew from putting a little bit of hashtags out there to try to get it trending right now. Search up the hashtag Murray Christmas and as a matter of fact you can actually see a trailer of it right now not much it's about 24 seconds but if you're familiar with Lost in Translation just the way that movie was shot overall you'll definitely kind of get that same vibe when you're watching the trailer for A Very Murray Christmas we will definitely review that for you guys when it becomes available and give you the final verdict on if that's a pass or a fail let's switch things up a little bit and let's talk a little bit of wrestling we'll start with wwe as did you hear after three seasons total divas is going to be moving from sunday nights to tuesday nights smart move right here i'm sure this is a welcome great piece of news for wwe as on a lot of sundays new episodes of total divas was competing with wwe pay-per-views slash special events so i would imagine wwe is ecstatic that now total divas is on a night of its own where it can finally breathe and doesn't have to worry about any pay-per-view competition timing of this is very good because the way it looks like this is being coordinated right now which will really benefit wwe the most it appears as though we're going to be getting tough enough and total divas airing on the same night but at different times is pretty much going to be back to back so talk about a great lead in you got the return of tough enough setting up total divas got a little bit of something for the guys maybe the girls as well with tough enough and then something for just the girls with regards to tough enough although i do know that there are quite a few of you guys out there that love to check out tough enough another pieces of wwe news how about the great debut of the samoa machine samoa joe making his presence felt at the end of wwe nxt takeover unstoppable getting into the face of the nxt champion kevin owens to you ring of honor fans we will show him love kevin steen what a great way for that event to go off great mark out moment for a lot of wrestling fans it had the community and a buzz as at one point and i think it like trended into the next day samoa joe his name was trending for a good hot minute there and although we have this situation where a lot of people are happy that samoa joe has finally come on over to the wwe others kind of wonder where were these same passionate fans 
when Samoa Joe was in TNA. And look, I can give you guys good points, bad points about Samoa Joe. Why did it take this man so long to jump ship? Come on over to the WWE. He had to have known that there has been interest in him coming over to the WWE for many years now. Did he have cold feet? Was the timing for him, in his honest opinion, just not right? What was going on? We'll never really know, not unless he gives an exclusive interview to WWE, maybe via their website or maybe if he's able to do a podcast or two, maybe he can express what was going on, his thought process. But until then, everything else is just hearsay. We have to deal with the facts for what it is worth right now and for what it's worth. It's damn good that Samoa Joe is in the WWE. And this is coming from a longtime fan that has followed the career of Samoa Joe really since he made his presence felt in TNA wrestling. I will admit that Samoa Joe should have came to the WWE sooner rather than later, but I am ecstatic that he finally has done business with the Stanford, Connecticut company, and I, for one, am buying Samoa Joe in the WWE. I look forward to seeing what he and WWE will be able to do with his Samoa Joe character. I am intrigued to see what type of matchups we will get involving Samoa Joe on the NXT brand. I'm going to go a step further than that and say I look forward to seeing how Samoa Joe goes against the main roster on main WWE programming. I don't know about you guys, but I'm buying it. I'm loving it. If you were at any point a Samoa Joe fan, you can't help but root this guy on. If you are currently a Samoa Joe fan, you've always been a Samoa Joe fan. Now, more than ever, you need to represent and show your support. I'm sure there's probably going to be a lot of people that's going to be a little bit bitter over this and all that. I know one thing is for certain people over in TNA are probably looking at this move and wondering if they can get that same reaction as Samoa Joe got yeah i'm looking at you ethan carter the third yes i'm looking at you the it factor bobby Roode, cowboy james storm i'm looking at you guys monster abyss i'm looking at all of you guys hell i'm even looking at ken anderson or aka mr kennedy i'm sure all of you guys are paying very close attention to how Samoa Joe does in the WWE, given the fact that you all have a little bit of conflicting bad news that's going on with your promotion. Folks, in case you did not hear about it, the TNA wrestling promotion got hit with an ugly one-two punch, but they ended up coming back swinging. Now, it all started last week when rumors had surfaced according to Destination America, that they were moving TNA Impact Wrestling from Friday nights to Wednesday nights. Now, a lot of people looked at this and said, what the heck is going on? They just said months prior that Friday nights was good. It was a good time slot for them. People crave wrestling on Friday nights, even though a majority of folks find themselves doing different types of activities on a Friday night because it's basically the jumpstart to their weekend. Personally, many people I know do not stay glued to their TV sets watching wrestling on Friday nights. If anything, they set their DVR, catch up on it on the weekend or maybe in the beginning of the work week, and that's how they roll. So you kind of hear this news about TNA leaving Friday nights, going back to Wednesday nights. You couldn't help but kind of say, you know what? This is a great piece of news because, hey, it's the middle of the week. There's not really anything on TV. Win-win situation. Everybody wins with this, right? But then shortly after that news had came out, we hear a new report that Destination America was looking to cancel all TNA wrestling programming sometime in the third quarter, pretty much right around September, maybe after the Labor Day holiday. Now, as you would imagine, this caused a frenzy throughout social media as at one point, Destin Destination America had actually trended. TNA wrestling had actually trended because the report that was put out there was... Destination America canceled 
TNA Wrestling. As you would imagine, and it didn't take that long, TNA Wrestling would respond with a statement saying that the information that was put out and that has been in circulation amongst wrestling news sites or news affiliates is false and that it was basically a form of defamation and that they were looking to sue all the necessary parties involved. Now, this report about Destination America canceling all TNA programming was originally the result of the reporting of one Dave Meltzer for the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. And as you would imagine, it's gotten him in a little bit of hot water. As we always try to tell you guys with anything that Dave Meltzer reports, take any and everything that you hear with a grain of salt. He's been on point in the past. He's also not been on point a lot of times in the past. He had actually, this news report that came about from him, it actually got him into a little bit of verbal bashing with Smashing Pumpkins frontman Billy Corgan. Yeah, it got that ugly. TNA Wrestling, they released their report. Dixie Carter has remained very silent. It's being reported that she will acknowledge what's going on with these rumors to talent at the next batch of TNA tapings. We'll continue to stay on top of that for you guys and do our very best to validate any information that comes about through our respective sources. But you hear that and then you hear Smashing Pumpkins' Billy Corgan, uh, TNA executive Bob Ryder coming to the defense of TNA, basically shooting down the reports, just shooting it down as poor rumors circulated by god knows who you hear that and honestly to kind of follow up on what i said earlier in the week if you are a tna wrestling fan you just got to keep your fingers crossed and hope for the very best for tna wrestling especially considering despite the few people that have stepped up gone to bat for the tna product oddly enough there has been no type of a report or press release from destination america or Discovery, Discovery Communications, based out in Silver Spring, Maryland. And we know that they're supposed to be revealing their fall lineup in the next coming weeks uh, for the 2015-16 season. So it should be interesting to see where TNA Wrestling lands on that one. But definitely when you look at all the signs, it doesn't look good. At one point we had the TNA Unlocked show that disappeared. Taz was supposed to get his own original show, but he bailed out, so that scrapped any idea. You had the multiple encores of Impact Wrestling, which eventually just got scaled down to, I think now it's just the initial premiere, and then the encore, and that's pretty much it. I think now they're kind of getting to a point where it's just, we're only going to show it once. Last I checked. I know this week they aren't showing a new episode, I would think, due to the Memorial Day holiday weekend. Uh, as instead, they're going to be showing last year's Slammiversary event. Yeah, they're going to be showing that for free on Destination America. All right. Speaking of TNA wrestling, it looks like former employed Eric Bischoff, Jason Harvey, his partner, Eric Bischoff's son, Garrett, they all have joined together to slap TNA with a lawsuit of a whopping over $100,000. Looks like they're all trying to split it amongst themselves. Basically, when it's all said and done, uh, it looks as though TNA Wrestling, the way they had arrangements set up uh, with all three, uh, it was a pay-to-play type of deal, uh, if you will. And it looks like at one point, many points, TNA were paying them on time. There was a couple of payments that they missed at which uh, Bischoff, Jason Harvey, uh, they sent TNA memos letting them know that they were late with the payments. This happened on at least two occasions. TNA would eventually resume paying them, but the uh, corporation, the company of uh, Bischoff and uh, Jason Harvey Enterprises, they're under the impression that the money that was given to them uh, was some type of a retainer, if you will, for their services and that they were still owed X amount from 
a certain time period. So I don't know about you guys, but it just, when I hear it, it sounds to me like they're just trying to fish around and they're just trying to get money for nothing. You know, I got to go with that Dire Straits song. Money for nothing. Get your checks for free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that ain't working. That's the way you do it. Money for nothing. Get your checks for free. That's the vibe I'm getting right now. We'll continue to stay on top of that one for you guys, though. And last but not least, one of the last pieces of news that we need to cover uh, this go round has to do with Vince Russo. Russo taking shot at Kevin Owens' WWE Raw debut, also taking a shot at Vince McMahon, talking about how Vince McMahon uh, basically does not know how to create new stars. Now, he wrote this blog, and you can read it in its entirety at the uh, CSRW website yes i said csrw uh website that's csrwrestling.com website to be exact the blog reads in parts and i quote when Zami Zayn first came out to the wwe universe on a national stage there was no impact the guy was presented as just another wrestler i don't care what anybody says in a year nobody will remember that debut Prior to that, that was the Ascension, or there was the Ascension, that was so laughable you almost have to think it was intentional. That was followed with Adrian Neville. Wow, that guy can really get height off the top. You forgot it by next week. Then, of course, this week there was Kevin Owens, a guy who looked like he just came from Gleason's gym where he was training to be a wrestler. Owens didn't look like a star. He didn't smell like a star. As a matter of fact, he looked like a guy that could have possibly jumped the guardrail. Which reminds me, I still remember Hillbilly Jim when he was presented as somebody the first time we saw him on WWE TV. And Owens dropping Cena? That did nothing but make the 15-time world champ look bad. Save your hate mail. This isn't an Owens thing, just like it wasn't a Sami Zayn thing, just like it wasn't an Adrian Neville thing, just like it wasn't an Ascension thing. Those guys are strictly employees who got paid to do what the boss says to go out and do. That boss is Vince McMahon. Somewhere along the line, shortly after the Attitude Era, what a coincidence, Vince McMahon forgot how to make stars. He forgot how to create them, how to manufacture them, and how to get them over. When you think about it, who has gotten over to superstardom in the last 15 years? I'm talking household names. In my opinion, that list is quite small. As a matter of fact, I'd put two people on it, Kurt Angle and John Cena. Okay, I'll even allow you to put the beloved Daniel Bryan on there if you wish, but his success had nothing to do with creative other than being given the platform to perform. So, when Vince Russo left WWF slash E and he went over to WCW, what big stars did he create when he went over there? If I recall it correctly, and not because of the Monday Night War, although I will admit they did do a nice job in covering what it was like when it was under Vince Russo's grabs, when it was under his regime, didn't go so well. As a matter of fact, it was so bad that WCW executives actually reached out to Eric Bischoff, had him come back to try to work with Vince Russo and steering the ship known as WCW from the sinking levels that it was going through under Russo and back up to the heights of great success that it was at when Bischoff was at the helm pretty much by himself and unfortunately at that point the damage had already been done. Russo, a lot to blame with regards to that. Don't really recall any mega stars happening under his watch in WCW. Uh, what, what, David Arquette as the WCW champion? Now, he said for the longest, bro, it got us popular. It got people talking, bro, 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 whatever. 
You go to TNA Wrestling. What superstars did he create when he was over in TNA? Not a damn thing. You know, it'd be one thing if Vince Russo was talking with authority in a way where, hey, look at what he was able to do, not just in this company, but this company and that company and this company. It's like, what has he done since the Attitude Era other than continue to bring up what he did in the Attitude Era? He'll have you believe that he was the one that created Stone Cold Steve Austin, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He'll have you believe that he was the one that had lit the fire under Mick Foley slash Cactus Jack's career. Uh, he'll probably take credit for what's going on with Triple H at that point, And we'll probably try to say that Triple H, matter of fact, he actually has tried to take credit for the career of Triple H, talking about how much of a doghouse Triple H was in after the curtain call incident and how Russo went up to bat for Triple H and all that. He'll have you believe that he was the one that basically saved Triple H's job in the WWE. There is a lot that he will try to take credit for, even though it is probably nine times out of ten a collected team effort, right? But he has not done anything of great relevance since the Attitude Era. And he continues to bring that up, right? You know, honestly, Vince Russo comes off like somebody that is really out of touch with today's wrestling product. Every single week, what he's done with these blogs, bashing the NXT guys, I will admit that for the longest time, for many years, it seemed as though WWE was not even remotely tried to focus on building stars of tomorrow. You look at an aging John Cena, who honestly is probably going to be in some type of a executive role in the back within the next three years tops, WWE has been trying to do everything it can in its power to build towards the future and building bigger, better stars for tomorrow. It kind of seems like real wrestling is on the verge of coming back at the WWE if you are a WWE fan. And NXT plays a large part of that. Russo, to me, comes off as if he has not been watching the NXT product from day one and you know I'm just curious what does he think about Samoa Joe's WWE debut is he dare going to put over Samoa Joe because for me if you're taking this much time to insult Kevin Owens and all that that should you be insulting Samoa Joe as well because after all you put Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens right next to each other practically from the same mode you know i'm very curious because at what point russo samoa joe under the same roof and tna wrestling and nine times out of ten russo was probably booking joe in matches coming up with creative angles for samoa joe so honestly i think russo is way off base with regards to this WWE, Triple H, they've been doing a really good job at building future stars of tomorrow. You look at what's going on with that NXT roster right now. You got Tyler Breeze. You have Sami Zayn. You have Finn Balor. You have Sasha Banks. uh, You have Becky Lynch. You have Charlotte. Uh, Do I really need to continue to go on and on and on and on and on? Now, one could make the argument, yeah, but will any of those guys be household names like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like Triple H, like Undertaker, like a Chris Jericho, uh, like a Immortal Hulk Hogan, like a Stone Cold Steve Austin, like Mick Foley. Will any of them ever get to that point? I'm not going to predict the future because I'm not Houdini. All right. I, I'm not a psychic. But I tell you what, if WWE and crew, if they continue to do what they're doing with that NXT brand, I tell you what, the future is very exciting. This is just a case where we really just need to kick back and, if anything, give WWE a lot of praise for willing to go in different directions and try to break that mold of 
big, beefy, muscular men. Yeah, yeah, look at that big guy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of veins in those muscles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, show me a little something. Pump that chest, man. <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah. I mean, come on. Really? I want to hear what you guys think with regards to this blog that Russo had wrote. Comment below. Hit us up throughout social media. I'm very curious. We'll definitely follow up on you all's reactions on our next podcast edition of the RCWR Show. Speaking of which, some things that we're working on for our next podcast, which you'll be able to check out live and uh, in your face, coming up Tuesday night, May 26th. 10 p.m. Eastern on Spreaker.com. We will preview the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view as the special event will be going on that weekend. We will also take a special look at WWE NXT and answer the question of whether or not independent wrestling promotions need to be concerned with NXT as Triple H is looking to have the NXT brand expand to the point that they'll be going on tour multiple times during the week we'll chime in on that put a special rcwr show spotlight on that and then also with the exit of david letterman how is the current state of late night talk shows who should you invest in if you have not made the investment yet in a late night talk show hoax i'll give you the skinny on that one we'll also cover the very latest in wrestling news and beyond so make sure you join us for that spreaker.com 10 p.m eastern live if you can't join us live even more the reason why you just check out the links down below as you can scoop up our episodes on demand via spreaker iheart radio stitcher tune in radio Man, we're like all over the place. Being Google search, the RCWR show. While you're at it, show some love. Check out our great conversation that we had with former WWE superstar JTG of the tag team Crime Time. We went all over the place talking about various subjects, including his book. Damn, why did I write this book? I love saying that. I get away saying damn because that's the name of somebody's book. That's badass. Great conversation. We've been receiving a lot of praise for that. As it stands right now, it is available on the downloads. Check out all the links below. We will have it uploaded on our YouTube page sometime before the weekend is out sooner rather than later. So make sure you keep coming on back. We'll have it audio enhanced and everything for you guys. So show that some love. It will be getting a lot of love on various wrestling websites from what I understand before this weekend is out. Just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up. Remember, you heard it here first. That is going to do it. So how did we do for this edition? Let us know. Sound off down below. Hit us up throughout social media. Love to have you subscribe, of course, so you never miss out on all the great content we do for you here on a weekly basis. Share this episode a number of ways by Facebooking, Google Plusing, retweeting it. One of the many ways you can spread a good word about our content. That's going to do it for this edition of the RCWR Show Extra. Until next go round, your host right here, the Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Azrael, Lee Sanders, thank you guys so much. Be safe, be kind to one another. Adios.